you must reduce some things now that you are 50. You know what I'm saying? I never knew Providence would bring us together. I have always longed to work with a person like that. He was a parent that was very mischievous. Hmm, Magbaje neatness, Officer Gouda. He wants to enjoy himself to the fullest. Wallahi, are you a now? The reason why we don't like sleeping in his house is that his dad will always wake up at 5.30 and they always have family prayers. <laughs> Undoubtedly, dreams are free, but the journey to realizing them is not free. Hence, there is a price to pay. Many people have dreams, but only a few achieve their dreams. One of the few who dared to dream big and achieved their dreams is the number one civil servant in the most thriving civil service in Nigeria. He is Hakim Olayinka Muriokwola. To some people, he is known as HMO. To some, he is the HOS. To some, he is referred to as a dude. We celebrate him as he hits half a century. Let's go down memory lane and talk about the golden boy. Born on the 7th of January, 1972 in Lagos Island, he started his education at Adrao International School and Irete Primary School. He later proceeded to the Nigerian Navy Secondary School, Lagos, from where he gained admission into Lagos State University, Lasu Ojo, where he obtained a bachelor's degree in law in 1995 and completed the mandatory one-year study at the Nigeria Law School. He is um, a leader both at home and in the workforce. He is highly cerebral. He is the firstborn and he's so protective of his own. He's so protective, especially for his sunshine sisters, his god sisters and the way he goes on about it. He doesn't joke when it comes to his siblings. He's um, very protective of his siblings and friends. Being the first comes with <clears throat> some attributes not necessarily passed through everybody else because you have to look out for people. And he's, you know, done that very well. I remember in the mid 90s, my husband now, well, thank God, he wasn't my husband then, he was just a friend. But he happened to be Oloria Ebi's friend. So he just made that mistake. He used to come to our house back then, a male when we were growing up. I didn't realize that he had told my brother that, ah, is that your sister? Ah, I have a crush on her, I'm going to marry her. Because that's against his principles when it comes to his sister, he used to tell us then, when he came with his friends, Oloria Ebi would tell us that, you know those boys that come? They all don't like you. When they come, all of you run upstairs and go and hide. So I used, we used to hide from those guys, not knowing that was what he did. He was a parent that he was very mischievous. And um, he was very mischievous. I just stopped part. He was very mischievous. Too many pranks too. He would take the car out without permission. And even if my mom would say, ah, was that not the car that I saw? No, of course not. So he was... There were stories to rebut that, and on this particular day, I know my mom could have sworn she saw, you know, one of the cars in a part of Lagos, and he needed to be home before she got home. So we sped home, and of course, the driveway was long, and <laughs> instead of pressing the brakes, because we were close to the fence, so instead of brake, um, pressing on the brakes, he pressed on the accelerator. <laughs> and so instead of actually parking the car, we went through our fence to the neighbor's fence. So obviously the story of us having been home, and of course I was in the back of the car, and in my shock, I just, I did, I mean, immediately I saw us fly through us to the neighbor's. That was it for me. I went into a state of shock. I opened the door. I ran the left and I kept on breathing. What happened? I couldn't even say whatever it was because obviously all the story, the story we had rehearsed was through the fence 
<laughs> Literally so. As a go-getter and a dreamer, HMO pursued a master's degree in international business law from the Queen Mary and Westfield College, University of London, England in 1992. He started his law career when he served as an associate solicitor with Adik Petun, Caxton Martins and Agbo Barristers and Solicitors between 1996 and 1999 and was later appointed Company Secretary Legal Advisor at Ibile Holdings Limited, the investment company of Lagos State Government, a position he held from year 2000 to 2003. Based on his outstanding prowess and leadership skills and his zeal to excel in all he does, Hakim was appointed by the then Governor of Lagos State, Ashua Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, as a personal assistant. His impressive performance while carrying out his role made the then government appoint him as Executive Secretary, Land Use and Allocation Committee, LUAC. He was later elevated to the post of Permanent Secretary in the Lagos State Public Service in 2011, and his first deployment as PS saw him serving at the Lands Bureau. As Permanent Secretary Lands Bureau, HMO proved that despite coming from the private sector, the determination to make Lagos greater could be achieved by being focused and also that some cumbersome processes can be made seamless. Hence, it was instrumental to the implementation and issuance of Electronic Certificate of Occupancy, E C of O. He achieved consistency in the 30-day processing of consent applications and this increased Lagos State's government's position in the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index. He also facilitated the establishment of the Electronic Data Management System, EDMS, as well as the upgrading and digitalizing of the Lands Registry. This helped create online searches of lands records. Ongman was later deployed to the Ministry of Youth and Social Development in 2015. As usual, he proved himself again with the creation of youth policy, first of its kind in Nigeria. He strengthened the adoption process in line with international best practices and was instrumental to the amended version of Child Rights Law and the Child Protection Policy of Lagos State Government and equally strengthened the Child Protection Unit to handle better and deal with child rescue in a timely and appropriate manner. HMOSPS was also instrumental in the creation of Lasoda Trust Fund and played a major role in the various empowerment programs set up for people living with disability PWDs, amongst others. All these he achieved within the three years of being permanent secretary. If you can dream it, if you can stay focused, if you can stand out, then you can do it. This came to fore when Hakim Olayinka Murio Kuala was appointed in December 2018 as number one civil servant in Lagos State. This added to his name as he is now referred to as the HOS. As head of service, he has consistently fostered professionalism among civil servants, promoting the good image of the service and consistently hosting the public service week by adding more color and glamour to the week. This is evident in the 2021 civil service week, where winners of the newly introduced games went home with brand new cars. He is somebody that, you know, believes in continuous improvements, constant progress, nothing like it can be done, find a way to do it, and do it in a timely manner, get results. Wherever you are in the world, he has effectively breached the generational gap. In terms of work 
ethics, in terms of the digital age, and in terms of looking to the future. And they will constantly always say, "How will she share by?" Ah, Mr. Obadino. He is very, very approachable. You know, you operate an open door policy, and um, he's very swift to respond whenever you go to him for anything. Very quick to respond. And I also, I also saw that he is a, he's a highly intelligent person. Very, very intelligent. Shortly after he was announced as head of service, he facilitated the purchase of new staff buses, which has further made commuting easier for civil servants who make use of the staff buses. Also, as HOS, his time witnessed the implementation of the new minimum wage. It should be noted that Lagos State was the first state to implement this in year 2020. He was instrumental to the creation of the Wellness Center situated within the Secretariat, Lagos State being the only state that has this in the country. And all this is stating just a few. The HMO is a very good man, uh, very straightforward, at least for me. I mean, it's very straightforward. He says it the way he sees it. And um, like all of us, there has been enormous maturity, enormous maturity that I've seen. Um, uh, he's a very, and he understands the system. I mean, the legal system, he understands it very well. So which I think is extremely good for the civil service because as the head of service now, he understands what has been happening within the system. Therefore, it's able to, he's able to give good advice, even at the executive council meetings and so on and so forth. So um, he's a very stable-minded person. And like I said, I like him because he says it the way it is. 50th is not a joke. Uh, it's something we should have celebrated more than what we are doing now because he's a civil servant and you must lead by good example. Even I told him that, don't worry, he's a civil servant, you don't have money, we will we be the sponsor of the party. He said, no, just let us be on a low pay. But, ah, ah. Abdul Hakim is Omolu uh, Abieko, as I call him, Omolu Abieko. And, uh, he's a man of honor, uh, he respects himself, and he's a friendly and nice guy. But one thing he doesn't like, you cannot make a fool of him. He's going to fight back. As much as he, he's a shy person, he try and avoid you, but when you push him to the wall, he will respond in a manner that you two, you know, expect. It's very good getting closer when he was made a Permanent Secretary, Minister of Youth and uh, social, uh, youth and social Development. And I just saw him as a very gentle, easygoing person. He, he has respect a lot. He said, I am more, and whatever, but he's our guy, and we give him that respect too. In fact, uh, I never knew Providence would bring us together. I've always longed to work with a person like that who shows understanding and who creates an environment for you to work without qualms. A spectacular man. Um, he's one of the kindest people I've ever come across. Um, he really cares about people and that's what makes it very special. Um, he um, will go out of his way for people to, and to support and help people, whichever way that may be. He's a very, very caring person. He cares so much for the members of the body. I have had cases of when members of the body need him and they call on him, he answers immediately. And he wants to ensure that all the members are well taken care of. Whenever we're, before the COVID period, whenever we're going out on Jumat, Ordinarily, no head of service will say, my staff should come in with him. But we ask all of you to come in with him and we'll go to the mosque together. He will even say it amongst you. It will take somebody that can identify him to tell you that, ah, head of service, Neil. 
He's humble. Ah, Kim Boy is humble. Wallahi, Kim Boy is very, very humble. He's nice and he's always smiling. That is one thing that I really appreciate about him. He's ever smiling. If you, if you come to his office and you're agitating, ah, who? He will say, then what? Calm down. Is anybody dying? Calm down. All work and no play, they say, make HMO a dull dude. As a socialite, he is a member of the Ikoi Club 1938, the Lagos Motor Boat Club, Lagos Polo Club, and F's Club. Um, he likes driving. He still likes driving. He's a foot. He likes football. He likes polo. He's a chilled person. He likes hanging out. You know, not necessarily going out too much, but hanging out during work, during fun time, during um, we go from work to La Casa to other places and. You know, to beach, Elasha, and all those places, we we have we have fun, but it's a it's a fun-loving guy, and it's um, doesn't care about who who's doing. He wants to enjoy himself to the fullest, and that's and there's there's only one life. He's a man that loves to enjoy himself. You know, he lets his hair down. Mm -hmm. He enjoys himself. Are you a now? <laughs> um, HMO is a doctor. Oh, do you know that? Oh, he's a doctor. He knows how to uh, prescribe. <laughs> so, um, during the lockdown, he was the one that made us try everything. We gargled our mouth. We were doing inhalation. We were doing uh, exercise. We were walking. We were, I mean, goodness. The first child and first son of his parents Hakim, one can say, has a good pedigree. A passionate lover, he is married and blessed with children. We used to go out a lot in the evenings, and most times we end up sleeping in his house because maybe we get home about four o'clock. And the thing that always happens, the reason why we don't like sleeping in his house is that his dad will always wake up at 5.30 and they always have family prayers. You know, imagine coming in at 4 o'clock and the entire family wakes up at 5.30 to pray. You know, the first Muslim prayer of the morning. And it's always so... So we always avoided going to his house to sleep over. But times when we slept over, we have to join the, um, the prayers in the morning, no matter how sober you were or otherwise. He's a dearly beloved husband to the queen of the Mariokwala clan, his wife. He's a super dad, dedicated to Nabs and H, and all our own munchkins, his nieces and nephews. Known for his powerful dress sense, he is never found wanting in the fashion world. His taste and impeccable way of combining colors show that HMO is a total package. Magbaje mm, neatness, Officer Goodo. He's always had that stylish, impeccable sense of dressing and taste. He doesn't like any stains or anything. He moves with some buffs in his car that he has to, if he has a little stain on his shirt, he has to change it. Uh, you see him on, it's, um, he dresses well and he, he dresses like, um, like a young boy. Intelligent, go getter. Fergust, powerful dreamer, fun to be with, serious minded, but also likes to joke, and above all, a quintessential gentleman. I pray that you continue to do the good things that you normally do. I pray that you are there for your wife, for your children, and that they become, your children become all that you wish for. And I pray that you live longer, in good health, and then, you know, but you must reduce some things now that you are 50. You know what I'm saying? So just reduce it and uh, <laughs> just take it easy, you know, and uh, maybe the beer should just disappear. Okay? <laughs> H, bro, bro, ola um, I wish you the best as you turn 50. Uh, it's half century. You know, we have this constant thing that uh, you call me a bro and I'm meant to call you a bro, although you only took 10 months from me. 
10 months and I'm counting. Anyway, um, I really wish you the very best. <laughs> My dear son, Ola Inka, Amokwala, A Abdua, Okwala, Akonbi, Amokwala, I'm wishing you a happy birthday and merry happy returns in good health, abundant blessings, and may the mercy of Almighty Allah continue to be with you. Ola Inka, Muri Okwala, my own dear Kim boy, I wish you the best you can wish yourself in life. Enjoy your golden jubilee, the golden boy. Um, Irama Sekina, I want to wish him all the best that in the course of his career, Subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him whatever his heart desires. Senior Fire, I say welcome to the Midas age. That's the golden age. My prayer for you is that um, all that you lay your hands on shall turn to gold, and I pray that you age gracefully. My prayer for you is that lines will continue to fall for you in pleasant places. We celebrate the golden guy. The dude hits 50. Happy birthday, HMO.